Now the Irish have their receiving team on. There is number 14 for Pittsburgh. Or for Notre Dame, excuse me, that's Ted Grottle. So he will do the kicking off. As the rain continues to come down here in Pittsburgh, Billy Owens at the left of your screen, Michael Hadley in the lower right hand corner. Well, they came well prepared, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, well, the forecast was for rain at 11 o'clock, Jim. What's going on here? This morning or this evening? No, this evening. Here we are with rain already. Here we go. Gravel all set to boot it. Hash mark near side. The 35-yard line. Back deep. Number one is Billy Owens. Number 10 is Michael Hadley. It is end over end. Hadley at the 10. Gets outside. Nice return. Bumped out of bounds at the 27-yard line. And that's where the Panthers were start. There is Sal Janela, the senior quarterback, definitely feeling the heat. And Janela has admitted publicly that the pressure has been getting to him. The crowd, kind of a problem for a junior college player. He's a senior. As you look at his numbers, they don't look too bad, except for the eight interceptions. Four of those were last week. So he has really not played that badly, but he has not played in front of this many people. He's almost like a freshman being a junior college player, and it's been a problem for him. The backs. Prentice Wright, 42. Craig Hayward, 34. Hayward, the tailback. He's got the football. Blocking over the right side by Ed Miller and Mark Stepnowski. Let's meet now the defense for the Irish. You just saw Craig Hayward, all 260 pounds of him. Riddick, a converted defensive back, just a freshman, and a good one. The young tight end, Eric Seaman. Williams is excellent. So is Osborne. They're solid receivers, but they have to get the ball from Janela. Hurry up offense for Pittsburgh now. Second down and a long five. Blocking on the right side again by Roman Matus and Mark Stepnowski. Here are the tackles. Roman Matus has worked his way up. He was second on the depth chart early in the year. Now, this is the best part of the team, the offensive line. They graded very highly last week, and they've been strong. Stepnowski among the best in the East, and Miller all East last year. Panthers picked up the first first down of the ball game. Hurry up offense. Strong side formation to the right. That's where Seaman, the tight end, is aligned. Hayward. Across the 40, a pickup of two. It's second down and eight. Let's take a look now at the Irish defensively. One three has played exceptionally well this year. Kunz has been out for three weeks. He did not play against Purdue. He was injured, but he's back full strength. The outside backers are excellent. Figaro, an All-American candidate. Darrell Flash Gordon on the other side. Bridget, Bridget had a bleeding ulcer two weeks ago, but he's back. And Volkar is the leading tackler. We'll see the rest of them after the play. Williams and Osborne are the wideouts. Bumble, Janela picks it up, gives to Hayward, doesn't want it. And Craig rambles back to about the 39-yard line. Cedric Figuerero on the stop. What happens early in this game to Janela may dictate who plays in this game. Ball is wet, AstroTurf is wet, and he's nervous. You can believe it. He's gotten a lot of publicity this week here in Pittsburgh, and he's got two excellent young players backing him up that may play in this game. Cornerbacks for Notre Dame, both good players, and they do not pass that well. Pittsburgh to the outside. The safety, Southall, second in the nation. He's got three interceptions. Streeter can come up and hit. On third and ten, Janella sends it deep. Incomplete at the 27-yard line. Looking for Henry Tootin, the sophomore out of Camden, New Jersey. Back on the coverage, number 29, Stan Smagala. Pressure by Cedric Figaro, number 48, coming in over on that right side. There is Tim Brown, who averages just under 15 yards on punt returns. Now the field is wet, the ball is wet. John Rasp standing back at his own 26. High spiraling kick, Brown at the 20. A three yard punt return. Good coverage by the Pitt Panthers. Let's meet now the Irish offensively. Andrzak completing almost 58% of his passes, but he has yet to be tested in the fourth quarter. Johnson caught two big ones last week as a receiver. Green, a great all-purpose back. He does it all. Terrell now a starter. Heck, a good tight end, but Tim Brown is the big guy. You'll see him going deep. Spruell, an excellent offensive lineman. This offensive line has four fifth-year seniors on it, and they're tremendously strong. The confidence of the offense lays in that offensive line. 
Tim Brown at the top of your screen. The backs are Johnson 22, the tailback Mark Green 24. Green will carry. Big hole left side blocking by Tom Freeman. The stop by Jerry Osaski defensively, the middle linebacker. So let's take a look at that pit defense. There's been some injuries on the defensive line. Spittler, a true freshman, John Carter moves from end into tackle. He's a good one. That won't hurt. Neither will move in Carnell Smith up. He was a backup, but he's a good player. Grossman may be the best of the bunch. Osaski coming back after injury. Zeke Gatson, look out. He's a blitzer. He's got 15 sacks. Reggie Ward, the senior out of Long Beach, number 83, wide to the left, along with Tim Brown, number 81. They're at the top of your screen. Second and a short one. Andrasak bends in. Green will carry for the first down. Up to the 35-yard line, John Carter suffering him down low. Very important for the pit defense to stop Notre Dame on first down. I said the Notre Dame offense really has not been tested. 54 of the 101 points that the Notre Dame team has scored have come after turnovers and mistakes on the other teams. The offense, aside from the uh, punt returns of Brown, have only generated 23 points without the help of the other team this year. They have not been tested. Tim Brown gets a rest. Alonzo Jefferson, the senior out of West Palm Beach, checks in. Mark Green, convoy around that right side, dives to the 40, picks up four yards, brings up second down and six. Now we asked Lou Holtz about that week layoff between the Boilermaker game. He said last year the week layoff was used productively. It was like a spring drill. We came at each other this year, three days on, three days off. The reason for the three days off, the Irish in the middle of exams and term papers were due. Andrews out. Airborne gets it to Brown. Brown see the elusive speed as he fights his way up to the 45 yard line and who's there number 26 Zeke Gadsden they'll meet more than a few times tonight yeah the Zeke Aru, he's he's a tough player he wasn't even supposed to start this year we'll talk about Darrell Woods later who was the starter Gadsden recognizes it immediately gets clipped still gets a hand on Brown and is able to make the play tremendous speed he knows where he is on the field if Gadsden has a weakness it's against the run you can expect Notre Dame to run right at him at times tonight Line of scrimmage, the 45-yard line. Jefferson checks back in along with Mark Green and Johnson in the backfield. Alonzo Jefferson met head on and driven back at the line of scrimmage. First to arrive for the Panthers, the right cornerback, Gary Richard, number six. Quarterbacks for Pitt are excellent players, very aggressive against the run. Pittsburgh has only given up 117 yards a game on the ground. It's a great defensive unit. In fact, the entire team has been hitting on all cylinders. The problem they're having is with the trigger guy, the quarterback. They're just not getting the productivity they need out of that position. Vince Phelan and what he's done so far this year, the senior out of Racine, Wisconsin, Terrell Austin is back deep. Not a very good kick. Short, wobbly, Austin fields at the 24 and goes down immediately. 9.47 left to go in a scoreless first quarter, a 31-yard punt. There was no return. The Panthers have the ball when we come back. Pitt and Notre Dame, the CFA on ESPN is being brought to you by Jeep. There's a feeling you can get only in a Jeep. And by the financial professionals at Payne Weber Incorporated. It is still raining here in Pittsburgh. 9:47, a scoreless tie. The Irish undefeated, ranked number four in the country, up against the Pitt Panthers, who are still using that unbalanced line. Osborne, wide to the right. Hayward in the backfield, the lone running back. Check it. That is Riddick, Lewis Riddick, number five out of Quakertown, Pennsylvania. Interesting because he, of course, was a defensive back and then converted to the fullback spot. But a running back in high school, and he's just a great athlete, this type of kid. They need to get into that backfield because Nate Hayward was injured uh, earlier in the year, and of course that's Craig's brother. Riddick in there had a big game, ran for 54 yards last week. When they run that single back formation, they spread the Notre Dame defense. They're trying to crack one up the middle and get some big yardage. Reggie Williams wide to the left down at the bottom of your screen, and number 34, the junior out of Passaic, Craig Hayward is back in. Ganella chased out of the pocket, a little shovel pass to Hayward. 
Lasso from behind at the 48 by Corny Southall. A 23-yard carry for that man, Craig Hayward. Of course, Pittsburgh is not that confident in their passing game. This is a great call when you're in your own territory. Watch 34 to the left of your screen. He almost gets tripped up. Janela does a great job waiting, getting it to Hayward. And now the big guy, 260, pulled down by his shirt. Discretion, the better part of Valor. That Valor, that was an excellent play. A good play to grab him by his shirt. Hayward goes the other way. Dives down to the 46. Ned Bolkar, the leading tackler for the Notre Dame Irish, on that stop defensively, and it brings up second and short. It's a defensive tackle by Bolkar. Watch how these two guys play together. Pritchard's going to dive in there and get rid of all the interference. And now here comes Bolkar. This isn't really a tackle, more like self-defense. As Nate, excuse me, Craig just lowers his head. Bolkar hangs on for dear life. It's a first down to the tight end, Eric Seaman, the freshman from Westchester, Pennsylvania, inside the 35 of Notre Dame. West Pritchett hanging on. Tom Eubner was the starter when the season began, but Seaman's come from way down in the depth chart. Now, a curl pattern is something that they like to throw. Janela does very well with curl patterns, so Pitt would like to keep that in their passing game and do that all night. They don't want to throw those deep inside patterns where they might get in trouble, so they're going to try and throw those curl patterns against Notre Dame and move up the field in a safe manner. Just inside the 35, Henry Tootin wide to the right. Bill Osborne to the near side. That's Osborne in motion. That's Hayward in motion. Big hole left side. Dean Caliguire opening up that hole. The sophomore out of Pittsburgh. They didn't have to go far to recruit him. And that's one of the things that Mike Gottfried said about recruiting here at Pitt. He said you could go outside this stadium, throw a rock, and you'll have 30 players that can play for it. Plus the rock to come back at. It's a tough neighborhood. Six carries, 20 yards for Craig Hayward. So he has now moved into sixth place on the all-time Panther rushing list. He's passed Warren Heller and Marshall Goldberg so far tonight. Joe McCall is next when he gets 16 more yards. You know. Like Houdini. Slides down to the 31. Daryl Gordon made the tackle secure. A lot of poise for the senior Sal Janella right there. Big play for Janella. Now, one of the criticisms of Janella is he's not been able to recognize the defense is quick enough. But this is a kid that comes from junior college. It's his first full year. Watch his feet. When he gets nervous, you'll see it in his feet. He doesn't set his feet. He doesn't know what he's looking at, but he does a great job getting outside here and running the ball. He needs a little more of this. Confidence can come and go, and if you have a good first quarter, it can come back in a hurry. Confidence is very important for Sal Janella. Otherwise, this will be like the gong show. <laughs> he won't be around at the end. Third and seven. point with 602 left to go the Panthers lead six nothing on this toss to Osborne remember last year's game was a one point game all right watch Streeter he takes a bad angle here comes Streeter slows down he never believes that that pass is going to get there it was the angle safety should take a better angle and prevent the touchdown he didn't do it so the Panthers facing the unbeaten Irish ranked number four strike first they lead six nothing much maligned, Sal Janella comes out in the first quarter and throws a touchdown pass. Watch the touch on this thing. He floats it right over Streeter, who's out of position. Osborne, a perfect pattern, and down the sideline. That's got to do a lot. 
for the young senior quarterback. In the middle, Sal Janella getting some encouragement from his teammates. The first high five supplied by Mike Gottfried as Sal came off. There's Van Horn who missed that extra point. And before this night is done, that extra point could be a very important missed extra point. Tim Brown back deep, and we talked about the fact he averages over 21 yards on the kickoff return. It's still pouring down rain here in Pittsburgh, where the Panthers have struck first against unbeaten Notre Dame. Squib kick. At the 15, Brown got to the ball and gets to the 26-yard line. Let's take a look now at that Panthers scoring drive. Seven plays, 77 yards. They used up just under four minutes, capped off by the seventh touchdown toss of the year by the senior quarterback, Sal Janella, to Bill Osborne, number 12. And also, there were two big passes in that drive and a run by Janella. So whatever butterflies he had early, and he's been under tremendous pressure, he overcame it to lead him to a score early. 5.58 left to go for Notre Dame. Brown going out to the top of your screen along with number 15, Pat Terrell. The backs are Anthony Johnson, 22, Mark Green, 24. And Rasek looks over the middle. Picked off by Pittsburgh at the 39-yard line, Gary Richards. Richards out of Bakersfield Junior College. He was rated in the preseason as the seventh best cornerback in the nation. The acceleration by number six, Andrzejczak buys time. Watch the acceleration. Gary Richard, a great pickoff there for an interception. Andrzejczak, after he lets it go, that should be a penalty. That was Spiller, the freshman. Roughing the pass. First and ten, Pittsburgh. They scored first. Here comes Hayward again. And the big back lumbers down to the 35-yard line. Cedric Figaro on the stop. There is Richard, whose role model is hero, if you will, in the NFL. Louis Wright of the Denver Broncos. Louis be proud. Sure, anybody be proud. I said at the head of the show that they felt they could cover Tim Brown one on one. He was one of the reasons. They felt that their two corners, Jones and Richard, were as good as any two in the country, and maybe they're right. Hosea Hurd and Henry Tootin wide at the top of your screen on second and seven. Janella, his last was 31 yards for a score. Over the middle, a low one inside the 20 to Henry Tootin on a curl. Irish are saying incomplete. The officials are saying it's a first down. The key to this is whether Tootin got his arms down on the field and protected the ball. There was no question the ball was low. Watch Tootin's arms as the ball comes in. Does he get his arms under it? Ooh. Ooh, that's close. That looks like it hit the green carpet. That sure does. There is Tootin, who made a great try. First and ten, they give them the reception at the 18-yard line of the Irish. Riddick. First and goal, Pittsburgh. Daryl Gordon, nicknamed Flash, stayed the touchdown, a 15-yard carry. This kid was a parade All-American out of high school. He's no stranger to the offensive backfield, and being a defensive back, he's tough. Plenty tough with great balance and great reactions. Look at that straight arm, and he just keeps going with the strong legs. Pittsburgh on the march. First and goal. They spotted at the left hash mark at the five. Panthers lead 6 nothing. Craig stopped at the line of scrimmage. Second and goal from the five. A hole that didn't develop. Good penetration that time by the Irish defense. Led by Brian Flannery, number 92, the sophomore out of Lakewood, Ohio, and the nose tackle, Mike Griffin, number 94. And you can throw in number 47, Ned Volkar, and the other linebacker, Pritchard, how they just stuffed the whole Volkar up over the top. A great job. One thing about a 260-pound back on the goal line, you can't miss him. The Notre Dame defense, of course, has not allowed a rushing touchdown so far this season. The defensive coordinator in the sunglasses talking with Lou Holtz. He has his back to you right now. That's Foge Fazio, who used to be the head coach here at Pittsburgh. 
So far, it's not been a happy homecoming. The Irish trailing 6 0, and the Panthers knocking at Notre Dame's door again in the country. Over the right hand side with his arms folded, that of course was Lou Holtz. Second down and five. Janella bends in. There's Riddick. Stopped and wrestled out of bounds, and a penalty flag comes down. Might have been a face mask. Horny Southall wrestled him out of bounds. It was a great play one on one by a defensive back that should have been a touchdown. That will be a very costly penalty because it would have been third and goal from the two. Comes Riddick around the end and a fa an inadvertent face mask but a face mask nevertheless. And the flag thrown to number 31, Southall, who is over now. Lou Holtz has already had his reprimand. And it'll be now. Look at the eyes of Sal Gianella. Good shot right there. The young man is gaining confidence with each drive. Mike Godfrey told us yesterday, on Monday at practice, he was convinced he was going to yank Gianella and go with either Dickinson or Watke at quarterback. By Wednesday, he wanted the experience going up against Notre Dame. It's paid off. How's that for a collision at the one? Ned Bolkar, 235 pounds, running into 260 pounds, Craig Hayward. Craig says, you've heard of Air Jordan? I'm Air Iron. That's what he tries here, but the linebackers for Notre Dame, Notre Dame again, Bolkar, that's Air Iron coming up over, and he gets it right in the <laughs> iron head. Bolkar making the stop. Good job. Timing, very, very important. Notre Dame had not been even scored upon in the first quarter until this game this year and now Pittsburgh looking at the second score second and goal from the one Janela ran backwards got to about the half yard line Cedric Figaro the first Irish defender to arrive shows a little bit of inexperience there Jim because Janela 6'3 205 when you run out of the goal line you've got to get lower Janela's too thin and too tall to try and take a quarterback sneak standing straight up and they stopped him immediately he's got to get down low and get in that hole well it's been Pitt's problem in the last couple of games they just have not been able to crack it into the end zone they beat West Virginia on a field goal six to three they lost out to Boston College 13 to 10. Wire now, number 64, a guard is in the backfield. Blocking for Hayward, who scores! 64, Dean Caliguire lined up in the backfield. That's 265 pounds, blocking for 260 pounds. Take a look. 64 blocks for 34. Well, a great reaction by Hayward. He stopped at the corner. Watch him slide back after he's hit. Over the goal line for a touchdown. Very hard earned, but a touchdown nevertheless and a surprise with Pittsburgh out ahead 12-0. Now, if you're Mike Godfrey, do you go for the two points? Absolutely, I would, yes. You missed the first kick. Jeff Van Horn's kick was wide to the left. Janela stays in at quarterback. Reggie Williams wide to the right. Seaman is the tight end. Prentice right in the backfield with Hayward. Janela dances, fires. Two points is good. Reggie Williams on a post pattern. Janela, the senior, much maligned. The coach thought on Monday at practice that he would not start. It would be one of two freshmen. But two scoring drives as Janela makes good on the two-point try, finding Reggie Williams on a slant in. 14-0 pin over unbeaten Notre Dame. and getting a deserved rest there is Sal Janela who has led the Panthers to two quick scores with 204 left in the first quarter much maligned but look at what he's done here tonight four for five 93 yards Kevin one touchdown and a very important two-point conversion sometimes in this post, talking to his defense sometimes you have to know it's all or nothing you have to know your back is right there and if you make a mistake you're out of there and I think Sal Janela found that out this week he knew if he did not play well in this game it was all over for him, and they'd go with a youth movement probably, and Janela has responded beautifully in the first quarter. He has been the offense. There is Tim Brown. All of the Irish, including head coach Lou Holtz, must be a little shell-shocked right now. 
unbeaten and untied. You come into Pittsburgh and you're behind 14 nothing with two minutes left in the first quarter. Francisco across the 30 yard line first and 10 for Notre Dame. Let's check in with that last Pittsburgh scoring drive eight plays 38 yards a short field. That was something that Lou Holtz was concerned about. They wanted the Panthers to have to drive 80 or 90 yards. Well, no question Pitt's offense is on track and that has been the only problem Francisco who returned that kick Jim is going to get a talking to he took it right out of the hands of Tim Brown and went back to do it. You don't do that at Notre Dame you let Tim Brown feel those points. Andrew Sack, his last pass picked off by Gary Richard that set up that scoring drive and set up the short field. Green hammers his way up across the 35 yard line in the grasp of Jerry Wall number 51. Miami of Florida out over the Terps seven nothing it's early. Howard Schnellenberger all knotted up. Cardinals of Louisville and Marshall in the fourth. Stanford oh no contest there Jack Elway. That's a final big surprise for California. Jerry Faust having problems against Oregon State. Do you think he's not inspired? He picked off the last one. He was like a bowling ball beating the 10 pin. He talked about Andrzejczyk not being tested. Now, this pass is not a good pass. It's a floater into the flat. Green was in big trouble from Richard whether he caught that ball or not. And it was almost a lateral. Andrzejczyk's got to get that thing out there a little quicker and let Green have some time to turn around and run upfield. There is a real surprise. Braxton Banks 39 checks in for the Irish. Andrusak out of the pocket. It's a floating pocket. Looks, fires. Timmy Brown. Loose football. The Panthers have it. At the 26 yard line, Quinton Jones. Troy Washington forced the fumble. He was on the backside of Brown. It's a wild one here in Pittsburgh. Notre Dame does everything they have to do. A little bit of a pick for Brown. They give him plenty of room. You see Richard. Now Richard's going to miss the tackle. A lot of people do against Brown. But here comes Jones pulling that ball loose. See that hand up in there? Washington getting the ball loose. And then Jones will come by. Gets a pit bounce as it bounces back in towards the playing field and not out of bounds. Tough break for Notre Dame. But the pit defense all around the ball as usual. They'll spot the ball just across the 25 yard line. Turnovers, always so important. Coaches will tell you every week you can't put the ball on the ground. Notre Dame has not done it early in the year. They've been very good with turnovers. Janela looks deep, dancing feet, fires, dropped at the 40 yard line. Reggie Williams had it. The ball a little bit behind Reggie. Did he bad beat? decision. Excuse me, Jim. Bad decision by Janella and a bad pass. His coverage from the safety coming. This ball is too flat. You can see it as it gets there. It's way underthrown. You can see the safety coming. He needed to loft that thing. Didn't really know where he wanted to throw that thing. Notre Dame secondary, I think, Kevin, so far tonight has been very slow reacting. Smagala not really in the vicinity. Streeter on the first touchdown with nowhere in the neighborhood. I'll add to that in a minute, Jim. I think there's a good reason. For that. Second and ten. Safety valve to Hayward. Lumbers forward across the 30 where Figaro is hanging on. The penalty flag is down back at the 17 yard line. A good play by Figaro. That play could have gone for big yardage had Figaro not made the play. Roughing the passer against the Irish. Notre Dame has hurt themselves with costly penalties and some suspect play I think Kevin in the secondary. Well I, the reason I think they're having problems in the secondary is because Pittsburgh has had such a bad time throwing the ball and because of Hayward I think they had to load up to stop Hayward a lot of these guys are committing to the run and Pittsburgh's taking advantage of it that's why they're late getting there because they're up there thinking they have to stop Hayward and they do but they're going to have to do one or the other. Lou cannot believe the call on roughing the passer. Well, it was Pittsburgh coming into this game that had penalty problems for over 450 yards in penalties in five games, and they were very concerned about it, getting themselves in trouble. But as you can see, it's Notre Dame tonight 
three for 31 and a costly fumble by Tim Brown plus an interception by Andrew Zach that has Pittsburgh ahead 14 to nothing. Two key turnovers and the face mask penalty inside the five that gave Pitt a couple of extra downs. Motion by Osborne. He's got a 31 yard touchdown run. Motion on the right side of the line for Pittsburgh. Vernon Kirk number 80 I believe jumped offside. So that's the first Pittsburgh penalty of the night. Well, you were talking about the penalties. There's the Pitt Panthers averaging over 10 penalties for close to 90 yards per game. 53 for 434 yards to this point in the year. And there's another one. And also, Jim, last week, on four separate occasions, they were first and 20 for first and 25. And that was part of the problem, part of the reason they couldn't get their offense going. The Pitt Panthers, they haven't had a tremendous, uh, tremendously difficult time concentrating. Hayward never quite had his balance, stumbled across the 40. Loose football, Irish recovered, but the whistle had blown. So the Panthers retained possession. Darrell Flash Gordon on the stop. That's the end of the first quarter. Two Pittsburgh scoring drives, a two point conversion, and the Panthers lead the unbeaten Irish 14 to nothing. Along with Kevin Kiley, I'm Jim Kelly. Welcome back. ESPN's triple header on a Saturday afternoon and a Saturday night. Lots of football. 14 0, the Panthers over the fourth ranked team in the country, the Irish of Notre Dame. Panthers ball at their own 43, second and 13. Janella to Hayward. Misfires a little bit too far. Storyline Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, voted America's most livable city. Well, the Panthers would certainly echo that tonight. Janella, who was not expected to be around at the end of the game if he got off to a shaky start, got off to a great beginning. Five of seven, 99 yards, one touchdown. The Irish with one costly fumble, an interception picked off by Gary Richard that led to the second Notre Dame touchdown. And look at the yardage. Notre Dame, Kevin, with just 61. Remember, 23 points generated by themselves by the Notre Dame offense. That's all, all year. The rest of those points, mistakes. Janela can run for the first down. He's got it and more. Out of bounds at the 37 yard line of Notre Dame. Corny Southall, the free safety, bumped him out. A 19 yard carry. You talk about getting confidence. Well, number 11, the senior quarterback, the coach has said he works as hard as anybody in practice. He's very intelligent. He knows what to do. All he needs is some success. Remember, I talked about it earlier. A, a junior college player does not play in front of 60,000 people, they do not play against Notre Dame. And uh, for a kid to have this kind of success against Notre Dame, you can multiply the confidence factor by any number you want. This is a big day for Janelle. Adam Walker, 29, checks in at wideout along with Henry Tooten, 81. First and 10. Riddick, former defensive back, with 4-5 speed. Down to the 27-yard line stands Magala on the stop. Got that Notre Dame defense confused, completely confused. And Janella passing the ball as well as he has. Hayward running, and now they've got Riddick involved in the offense, and Notre Dame having their problems. There is the ex-head coach of the Panthers, Bo Fazio. Now the defensive coordinator for Notre Dame, but it's been that offensive line of Pittsburgh really asserting themselves. Chip Pakowska, 68, the senior in at center. And Chris Getz, number 72, now the new right tackle. Riddick dives down to the 25-yard line, blocking on the left side by Ricketts and Caliguire. Brian Flannery on the stop defensively for Notre Dame. That offensive front completely handling the Irish. A good job. And, and the other bonus of having a 260-pound tailback, when they move him out there in that pro set or weak set, Nate Hayward, I keep saying Nate Craig Hayward, Ironhead becomes a blocker for Riddick, and he was on that play. Yeah, I'm not sure you want to see too many 265 pound guys coming at you out of the backfield when they've got four or five yards to build up some momentum. Lead blocker, a tailback, his size is a big asset. First and ten for the Pittsburgh Panthers. They lead 14 zip. There goes Hayward. And Ironhead bangs it down to the 20 yard line. Second and five coming up. You know, back to the Sal Janela story for just a second. Mike Gottfried, we talked about it, thinking of giving him the hook, kind of like the gong show. 
And Janela, he didn't even know he was going to start. Mike talked to the Pittsburgh Boosters Club yesterday. Said, I don't know who my quarterback is. Told you and I on Friday at practice it would be Janela, but for how long, nobody knew. I think that was good, and I think because the pressure didn't build, if he knew he was going to start on Tuesday or Wednesday, the pressure would have built. Instead, he gets to Saturday, and he hopes he starts. It's a different feeling. Riddick hurdles over one man and gets down to about the 17-yard line. Mike Griffin, the nose tackle on the stop. Riddick is a guy who was a running back in high school. When they moved him, Lewis didn't want to be a running back. He liked it in the defensive secondary. He was kind of hoping they'd move him back. But these are moves of a pretty good running back. As I said, at All-American in high school, the guy can run. After the game last week, he had 54 yards. He was happy. He liked being a running back, and I'm sure he's enjoying it out there tonight, doing a nice job. There's a timeout down on the field with 12.36 left to go before halftime. The Irish unbeaten trail, 14 Zafe football is brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To arrange a thorough test drive, simply phone your nearest BMW dealer. And by Tempstar, the newest name in home heating and air conditioning, you can rely on the star. Along with a former star in college and professional ranks, Kevin Kiley, I'm Jim Kelly, and welcome back to Pittsburgh, where the Panthers have a commanding 14-0 lead. At the 16-yard line of Notre Dame, it's third and one. Unbalanced line to the right, and that's why. Iron Man, Iron Head, Craig Hayward hammers his way inside the 15. I'll tell, you some, I'll tell you something about Hayward and his helmet. When you hit helmet to helmet, you slide off. I think that's what happens here. You've got an unbalanced line doing a good job against Notre Dame. When he puts his hat down with all that weight behind it, it's virtually impossible to stop him if he gets to the line of scrimmage. You've got to penetrate, and the pit line is just not letting that happen against Notre Dame. So when Hayward gets there, he's going to get that first down. You'll never stop that guy. 33 yards for Craig on 13 carries. There's Coach Fazio. His defense with their backs up against it now. Look at that stat. Notre Dame with just one first down. They haven't had the ball. No block. Trap blocking on the left side inside the 10. Poons and Pritchett made the stop on Craig Hayward again. Hayward now has moved into fifth place on the all-time Panther list, just passing Joe McCall. Charles Gladman is next. And if Craig gets over 77 yards, he'll be the fourth leading rusher in the history of Pitt. Right, he rushed 100 yards in the last the five game. games. What did Dorsett last 20 games for a second this year? He was over. Incredible statistic with Craig. Craig's on his way. Riddick and Hayward are in the backfield. Second and six. Riddick. Look at that extra effort. They had him stopped at the 10. He kept the knees turning and fought his way down to the six, where George Streeter, the safety, made the stop. Uh, one of the first things they teach you, both on offense and defense, but I know on defense, is to keep your feet moving. Watch Riddick. Good, strong upper body, benches over 300. Now, even though they've got a hold of him, look at him keeping those legs going. It's a great run by a defensive back. He bench presses over 300 pounds, very strong, has a 3.7 grade average. He's the cousin of Pitt graduate assistant Donnie Roberts and a cousin of former Pitt and Green Bay Packers star Timmy Lewis. Watch number 64, Dean Caliguire in the backfield, blocking for Ironhead. Craig Barrow is down inside the five where Daryl Gordon made the stop. Boy, is that a load. It is a load. Caliguire leading. And watch Gordon grab him by the foot. That's the only thing that stops him. A lot of beef out there in front of Hayward. He runs into it. Now watch Gordon grab his left ankle. See him? He's got a hold of him by the shoe or else Ironhead's headed into the end zone. Good play by Gordon. The measurement for the first down. If it is a first down, it'll be first and goal for the Irish. Actually, the first and goal for the Panthers, and it is. Lou Holtz looking at perhaps a 21-point deficit 
with still ten and a half left in the first half. This is a coach whose team had not given up a first half touchdown. Well, no, last week Purdue scored right. 17 points two weeks ago in the second quarter. They have been behind, by, but not by this much. Right and Hayward in the backfield. Well, he cleared air traffic control, 265 pounds. Irish said it was a loose football. The officials said that Craig Hayward was down, so it's second and goal from the two. We talked about emotion earlier, Jim. You're looking at a team that has not had a whole lot of offensive success and balance. They've run the ball, but they have not passed tonight against the fourth-ranked team in the nation. They are getting emotional, and they are taking it to the Irish. Is that Lou waving the flag there? The white flag? Oh, I see that's Mike. The Mike getting the attention of his offense. The Notre Dame defense holding opponents to less than 12 points a game on average. They've given up 14. And now Sal Janela says timeout. We better talk things over. So with 9.35 left to go in the first half, it's been all pit. The Irish ranked number four, having their helmets handed to them early. There's an amazing statistic with Notre Dame ranked number four in the country. They've only had the ball for four minutes and 16 seconds. And not always an indicator, but tonight it is definitely. What little time they've had it, they've turned it over twice, and Pitt has been able to sustain those long drives and get points out of them. Best way to keep Tim Brown not involved in the game, keep the football yourself. And not Second and goal from the two. Third and goal from the two. Brian Flannery and others made the stop. A pit is very, very easy to defense, I think, on the goal line. Not easy, obviously, but they're easy to read because it's an eye formation. And Hayward is the guy who's going to get the ball. So if you're a linebacker like Bolkar, you're just going to line up against Hayward and go right for his helmet. And that's exactly what's happening here. You know that he's going to get the ball. The question is, can you get him man to man and keep him out of the end zone? And we'll find out right here. 41 yards on the night so far for Craig Hayward, number 34. Caliguire was in, checks out. Riddick checks back in, number five. Play action fake. This will be a touchdown. Sal Janela. And look at the Panthers rallying around their senior quarterback. They knew that the pressure was on him all week. He even made some remarks to the local press that things were starting to bother him. He was distracted by all of the pressure. And some of the Pittsburgh coaching staff, to be honest, not quite sure that he could handle it. Not quite sure he would rise to the occasion tonight, wondering whether he would toss in the towel or not. Well, he's answered his critics in fine style. He sure has, Jim, as you look at Foz, and he's looking at his defense and wondering what happened to him. Jeff Van Horn, who missed the first extra point try, will try for another out of the hold of Bill Osborne. Van Horn, one for two on the night, 21-0 pit. Had you been on the side of this play, you might be able to read it. The backs were very tight. You might have been able to tell what was going to happen. It's just a fake into the line. Janela definitely feeling good as he goes over. A tough play to stop for any defense when you've been running well inside. The Pitt Panthers, they were a touchdown underdog against the fourth-ranked team in the country. They lead by three touchdowns. Kevin, if you think smoke comes out of the smokestacks here in the steel city of Pittsburgh, that man is steaming. Well, I can remember two weeks ago or three weeks ago how mad he was when his second unit gave up a touchdown to Michigan State late in the game when the game was won. He must really be unhappy now. This is He's, not the type of thing that, uh, that he can deal with. Maybe. He said yesterday at the hotel that he knew that Pittsburgh was going to rise to the occasion and play well because they were playing Notre Dame. He said we have to rise to the occasion and play well because we are Notre Dame. Well, the Irish are getting shell shock right now. 21-0 Pitt. But Jim, that last drive was 16 plays by Pittsburgh. Notre Dame has had, to this point, with 8.47 to go in the second quarter, seven snaps offensively from center. You don't win games like that. One interception, one fumble. Jeff Van Horn, the sophomore out of Spokane, Washington. Line drive. Tim Brown dribbles it at the 15. Penalty flags are down, and so is Brown at the 36. Two flags were thrown quickly, a 23-yard return. But the way those flags were tossed out there, Kevin, 
clipping might be a good bet. I think that's a good guess, Jim. And that was very close by Tim Brown to breaking it again. Well, we saw him in the Michigan State game break punt returns of 70 and 66 yards. So you know that when he gets the after jets turned on, he can scoop. You know what's amazing about Tim Brown? He's 14th in the nation, even with those two punt returns, in punt returning. He's still rated only 14th. You saw Lou Holtz over on the sideline. He comes into Pittsburgh. A commitment to excellence doesn't mean coming close. A commitment to excellence means being successful, and even that more so when you're at Notre Dame. Andrusak has had one picked off by Gary Richard. Notre Dame penalties now. Four penalties, 46 yards. Notre Dame is only, before tonight, had only been behind once, and that was in the second quarter against Purdue, and they snap back in the second half. They have not really been in a ball game, a tense ball game down the stretch. And this one, even if they do come back, will certainly go down to the wire. So they'll be tested tonight. They already have been. Tim Brown in the backfield. Nothing doing around the right side. John Carter stayed at home along with Jerry Wall. Well, you, this is exactly what you want for Tim Brown. You want him to run laterally if you're a defensive player. They pitch him the ball. It's a lot easier to run that kid down when you have an angle on him and come across the field, and that's what they did. He is not all that dangerous in the backfield, averaging only 1.3 yards per carry coming into this game. The pit defense always tough. Has not given up a first half touchdown since the first play, as you saw. Andrusak out of the pocket, looks, fires behind the intended receiver, Reggie Ward. Now they only had two receivers out on that pattern Ward 83 and uh, number 81 Tim Brown. They're a maximum protection team. They like to deny it but back there in their own territory they want to keep everybody in. A poor choice by Andrzejczyk thrown into coverage. Had that ball been out in front of Ward it might have been intercepted. Andrzejczyk now two out of five one interception just 43 yards and perhaps showing the respect that Notre Dame has for that pit defensive front the floating puck for Gadsden too. Oh, Ezekiel, they want to stay away from it. Third and ten. Contact was made. John Carter jumped offside. Well, that's a tough penalty because it changes. It really allows Notre Dame to do some different things. The patterns don't have to be as deep. That five yards make it, makes it third and five. And uh, it, actually, the advantage goes to Notre Dame here. Now. Not as tough as third, third and ten. I watch out for Green on this play now. Mark Green, if he's in the game, excellent receiver out of the backfield. They can isolate him on a linebacker. That changes it to third and five. Blitz. Got it. That was, John Carter. That was a shuttle pass to Green is what it was supposed to be. They wanted to pitch the ball to number 24 on a little quick shuttle pass. Watch Andrzejczyk and watch 24 slip up here. He wants to give it right there. See a green turn around, but there's nothing there. His own man got in the way and pit covers up. Punting situation now for the Irish as they're faced with fourth and 11. Vince Phelan, line drives it. Terry, uh, Terrell Austin. Great field position for the Pitt Panthers. They lead 21 nothing with 721 left a 34 yard punt first and 10 pit from the 33 of Notre Dame coming up. Back Pittsburgh Pitt leading no go ahead back at Pitt Stadium Pittsburgh 21 Notre Dame nothing big surprise. 56,500, a sellout crowd. We asked Lou Holtz about coming into Pitt before that sellout crowd, and he said, well, they've got to stay in the stands. Yeah, they're they're not, untamed. Not armed, he said, not armed. So he'll reload <laughs> the gun and try again. Motion by Osborne. And not much motion this time by the Pitt offensive front. Gordon and Bolkar on the stop of Hayward. Anyone's 
inside of seven minutes when the ball is snapped the line of scrimmage the 32 yard line. Every down becomes a big down now for Notre Dame's defense. They just cannot allow any more points in this game. Lone running back Hayward. Janella. Caught at the 26 yard line. That's Henry Tootin, the sophomore out of Camden, New Jersey. And Janella continues to have the hot hand. And Marv Spence on that play might have intercepted the ball. He was playing the man and not the ball. And he turned. He could have gotten in there. And as you look at those stats from San Sal Janella, Lou Holt said, we're preparing to play the, the uh, pit offense. We're not preparing for any particular quarterback because even they were aware of the turmoil facing Sal Janella this week. On third and three, Janella needs a block. We'll get the first down close to the 22 yard line. George Streeter came over from his safety spot, but not before Janella dove for the first down. And Janella did something here that a veteran does. He felt the pressure on his back. He could feel it. And he stepped back right there and outside. And now, as he has done all night, he's just tucking it in and going for it. He's got Notre Dame back on their heels. They don't know what to make of this kid now. He's playing exceptionally well. The brain trust of the Irish, former head coach here at Pitt, Coach Fazio, Fazio and the uh, sunglasses, and Sal Janella looks at first and ten from the 22. Motion by Hosea Hurd. Hayward. He got the last five on his own. Frank Stams was hanging on, said, "Help, help." Yeah, as anyone would. Uh, you're seeing. A team that was very frustrated offensively. Two, three, three point games. Hayward having a good game most of the time, but they're not winning. And now this guy's pumped up and running hard because he knows the rest of the offense is clicking and it all won't be on his shoulders. So he's a little bit rested and he knows he's got Notre Dame on, the, on their heels. 19 carries, 47 yards for Hayward, second and seven. Riddick. Blocking on the right side by Lewis Stepnowski and Getz. Tackle made by 94, Mike Griffin. Well, we talked about it being a triple header, Kevin. The 49ers of Long Beach State, the Tigers of Pacific at 10.30 Eastern time right after our game. Greg Papa and Dave Logan standing by to bring you that one at the conclusion. Long day for Tim Brando back in the studio. Game day started at 11.30 Eastern time. Scores and highlights coming up at halftime. I can't wait to get back to my hotel room and catch that game. A triple header on ESPN. I want to see what Tim looks like at 2 in the morning. First and goal from the two. Hayward real upset there. He wanted to go in. He could have gone out of bounds. He tried to stop himself so he could pick up those last two or three yards south though making the tackle. There, there's a load 200. You know he was 10 pounds when he was born. And his brother was 13 pounds when he was born. Mother said he was three months old the day he was born. Howard Wire lines up in the backfield again. Hayward again. Touchdown again. I think had anybody told us coming in or had we told anybody that Pittsburgh was going to have a 28 nothing lead at halftime over the number four ranked Irish of Notre Dame unbeaten and untied they would have put us in a room in a straitjacket. Well certainly yeah. <laughs> I hope not. With, with rubber mattresses <laughs> on the wall. I would hope they wouldn't take it that seriously. But uh, 
You know, I'll tell you what, this is this is a defense that's getting crushed by an offense that is doing everything right. They are being embarrassed and they have been on the field the entire first half. Their offense has done nothing and they've really put a burden on their defense. Osborne one for two on the extra point. Snap is high. Osborne pulls it down and there are penalty flags down. Penalty flag to be checked out. Hayward, of course, tonight has become the fifth Pitt Panther to right run for over 2,000 yards. Procedure against Pitt. One of the few mistakes that they have made. From behind the defense, look at 265 pounds. Yeah, consider the weight of that offensive line and the time that these guys have been on the field. Bolkar does not have the angle. You need to be straight up on 260 pounds of running back. He wasn't, but it's repetition. It's been the same thing all night. It's just power football and too much time on the field for the Notre Dame defense. We talked about Craig Hayward joining the exclusive club. Ahead of him, Charles Gladman, Brian Thomas, Elliot Walker, and Tony Dorsett. When he played here, it was Tony Dorsett. Another one by Jeff Van Horn is no good. He's one for three after the penalty was stepped off. 3.55 left to go. Foge is having a very tough homecoming. Former head coach here at Pitt. He talked about his defense last night at the hotel. He said, we don't have a dominating guy like a Gadsden. We don't have great speed. We're not devastatingly quick. So far in the first half, they haven't had much at all. Well, I don't think you can blame it entirely on the defense, but they certainly not have played well. They have had a really rough time, but when you consider time of possession, which is probably nearly 20 minutes for Pittsburgh in the first half. I don't know that you could. I don't know how you can equate this thing. These guys have just been on the field the entire half and they've run out of gas and Pittsburgh just gaining momentum as they go along. How dominating has Pittsburgh been? Billy Wendell into the record book here. Let me tell you that in the entire series, as you take a look at that scoring drive, this is the 49th meeting between Pitt and Notre Dame in the entire history of this series. The most points that the Panthers have scored ever against the Irish. 34 in 1975. They've got 27, and we've still got four minutes left to go in the first half. I will say I was amazed when Pittsburgh lost to Temple, and I believe that they were too. I think Temple surprised them, ran for over 200 yards uh, in that game. You know what Mike Gottfried said about the Temple game? He said you had to see it to believe it. They just kept finding ways to beat themselves. Well, the Irish. One interception, one fumble, found two ways to dig a hole. That led to two pit scores. And the pit offense responded to the challenge. Van Horn, squib ones again. Brown will get it at the seven. Runs into his own man and trips at the 21. Well, we talked about Tim Brando coming up with scores and highlights. There is Bino Cook who was the Pittsburgh Sports Information Director 1954 to 1965. Maybe Tim will be able to find out at halftime why Bino changed his name from Carol Cook. <laughs> Kerry Ross will be with Barry Switzer, head coach, of course, at Oklahoma. And you talked about Tim Brando, a long day on a triple header day. Tim Brown is down after running into his own man. You said you wanted to see what Brando looks like at 2 a.m.? No, you don't. Yeah. I guess you have, huh? <laughs> No, they've got a lot of makeup back there. That's pretty serious stuff here with Brown on the ground. He's up now. Watch 81. Gets it on the thigh. On the upper thigh, just below the pad. Looks like it might be a bruise. Looked like he ran into Tom Byrne, number four. Yeah, he looks to be okay. Looks like it was above the knee and not the knee. They don't want to lose this kid. The Irish trailing 27 to nothing. Notre Dame came in with big victories against Michigan, Michigan State, and Purdue. They came in holding opponents to less than 12 points on average per game. And they haven't had the ball very much. Almost a four to one ratio. Andrzejczak works with Mark Green to the near side. Alonzo Jefferson, top of the screen. Andrzejczak throws that one out of bounds. 
Quentin Jones was back in the general direction defensively for Pitt. Every receiver that went out was covered, and I mean covered, by Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh I would not want to be in the locker room at halftime. Yeah, Lou, Lou pretends that he doesn't yell. I think yeah, I think I think Lou is a bear. I think when he gets in there, he's gonna he's gonna let him have it. He said he needed three things in this game, and uh, the defense, the kicking game, and discipline. And they've had a rough time. Now, what is that play call signaling to the pit defense? And Rizak in the grasp of Zeke Gadsden. Let's go back to the layoff. We talked about it at the top of the telecast. In 86, they got after each other. They conducted themselves like a spring practice. This year, three days of practice, three days off to get ready for exams, work on term papers. Lou Holtz, of course, last year, similar situation after the layoff. They didn't play particularly well against Pitt, so maybe the layoff has had a little rusty effect. Tim Brown back in, motion. They need eight. Andrasak misfires too high for Brown at the 39. Gary Richard with an interception to his credit. Back there on the coverage, and Gadsden, 26, was all over Andrasak. Yeah, and Notre Dame, when they are predictable like this, they're in trouble. Nobody blocking Gadsden from the backside. Just after he throws it, he gets Andrasak. That is not Notre Dame's strength to be in a predictable situation. They need to be able to stay on schedule, run the ball, have third and short. That's the way they play football best, and they're not getting it done tonight. Phelan will punt it to Terrell Austin. Austin at the 33. Gets a couple of blocks. Penalty flag is down, and so is Terrell Austin at the 45. Pat Terrell tackling Terrell Austin and a flag to be checked out. A 43-yard kick, a 12-yard return, and in all probability that return will be negated flag looks to be against the Pitt Panthers. Clipping Pittsburgh. Talking to Coach Godfrey, he, he talked about the fact that he was hitting on every cylinder except quarterback. He felt that if he get his quarterback to play well, Janella in this case, that he had a very, very fine football team. His offensive line last week graded higher than they ever had. The same could be said of his receivers and his defense was playing exceptionally well. So the frustration here in Pittsburgh was enormous that they weren't better than three and two. They felt they had a great football team, and I think they're proving that tonight. Now, if you're Mike Gottfried, you've just sent your senior quarterback right there, Sal Janela, back onto the field. 27-point lead. Do you get cute? Do you go up top? Do you try to add to the lead? Or do you try to not make any mistakes and give Notre Dame any momentum to let them get on the board? I think good football strategy just dictates to play it close to the vest. Close to the ball, you'll find number 34, Craig Hayward. He's tackled by Daryl Gordon, number 38. Every Saturday, it starts at 11.30 Eastern time. Tim Brando, Bino Cook, and Kerry Ross with game day. Scores, highlights, and features throughout the afternoon. Our first game yet to be decided at 4 o'clock Eastern time with Mike Patrick and Lee Corso. Kevin and I will be in Alabama. The balls of Tennessee and the Crimson Tide. A great rivalry at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Williams wide to the left, Osborne to the near side. Ironhead cracks it to the 27. West Pritchett on the stop inside of two minutes. Well, they wasted about 15 seconds before they took the timeout. I just see Lou there. Lou called timeout and then changed his mind. He wanted to call timeout. You saw him, Jim, give that timeout signal, and then he waved it off. He wants to wait one more play. Third and seven. Will they put it up? I'll bet not. I bet wrong. Going for the downs. Incomplete at the 35. Tootin was covered by Smagala. As good as a punt. If he intercepts, as good as a punt. They have not thrown the ball over the middle on those crossing post patterns. That's a safe pass, one they felt Janela could throw, and uh, they went for it there. John Rasp is the punter, and that man would like to break one as he did against Michigan State. 66 and 70 yards. Tim Brown back deep. Rasp hung a beauty. Brown drops it. The Panthers dive for it at the 25. 
But the Irish get it back. George Streeter fell on that loose football. Was he looking at the coverage? He took his eye off the ball, or did the gloves bother him? I wouldn't presume. I think it hit him in the pads. It hit him right in the chest in that plastic plate that you wear. And on the wet, uh, in the wet conditions, just about anything could happen. I wouldn't presume to guess how Tim Brown catches a punt. I'd just let him catch it. But uh, in that particular case, it just went right through his hands. Panthers are out of timeouts. Irish have all three with which to work. Andrasak airborne. Flares it out to Green. Green will try to get out of bounds to stop the clock, but a penalty flag will do the damage as well. Osofsky on the stop, 55, the middle linebacker for Pitt. It's a good call by the Notre Dame offense, a potential big play into the short side of the field. I think it's going to be a clip, though. Mike Gottfried in his second year as the head coach at Pittsburgh, the 29th head coach of this great university, 5-5-1 five, five and one a year ago. Andrew Zach safety valves to Green. Where's the penalty? Right there. Tom Freeman with his hand on the defender. It's not allowed, folks. It's a tough spot for Notre Dame. What do you do? Your offense has been totally ineffective. You really need to use that minute and nine seconds and all your downs. But it's first and 20. It's wet. This is what people, this is what coaches get paid for. And I, I wouldn't know what to do. How about a fly pattern to Tim Brown? They've got one on one coverage at the top of the screen. Mark Green. Not much doing. Stop at the 17 yard line. Lou Holtz wants a timeout. Rather emphatic with 55 seconds left to go. It's been all pit. The Panthers lead the fourth ranked Irish 27 to nothing. That score against a team that is only allowed on average 12 points a game. And in the history of this series, and this is the 49th meeting, the most points that Pittsburgh has ever scored against Notre Dame was 34. They've got 27 in the first half. And that man will have a lot of reminding to do. Single coverage again on Tim Brown. Will they test it? Andrew Zak across the line of scrimmage, out of bounds, will stop the clock at the 21. Osofsky, the middle linebacker. Good speed, good acceleration for number 55, the junior out of Youngstown. The man that the Pitt Panthers say defensively they least afford, could they could least afford to lose. And another guy is number 26, Zeke Gadsden, hiding. And nobody can see him. Look how quick he is. He gets around and now from the backside. Look how quick Gadsden is. He doesn't make the tackle, but he can put pressure on you. He's all around the ball. Brown and Terrell slotted out wide to the left on third and 13. Brown got it first down and will try to get out of bounds. Dances down, loses the ball, but out of bounds. Bumped out at the 45-yard line of Notre Dame. Troy Washington on the coverage, 40 seconds left. Another one of these crossing patterns. Uses his speed running across the field to outrun Richard. Excuse me, to outrun the coverage and a great pass by Andrzak and then out of bounds. Great pass. It was a pass that made that play. It was right on the money. A little bit behind him. It could have been intercepted. There's what Tim Brown has done in the receiving department. He's also fumbled the ball twice. <laughs> on the post, dropped at the 23. Into double coverage, Troy Washington back there. Now I was watching, I was watching in the warm-ups, Andrzak throwing long passes, and he was short on most of the passes, even in practice, and again he was short in the hole there, and that's something you can't afford to do. I don't know that Andrzak's strength is the long pass, certainly not against the prevent defense. How about throwing the long pass in the weather? The rain is pelting down on the Panthers and the Irish here in Pittsburgh. It started just seconds before the kickoff. 
and that man, Tim Brown, number 81, so effective on the crossing patterns to take advantage. And the receiver, as we pointed out at the top of the show, always knows where he's going. The defenders do not. Not utilizing Brown to the best of their ability. Andrzej rolling left, throwing right against the grain. Incomplete to Reggie Ward. Richard with an interception back on the coverage. Third and ten with 28 seconds left. There you see Lou Holtz sending Tim Brown, his nice trophy candidate, in with a play, third and ten. What do you think Brown's performance thus far tonight is doing to his Heisman hopes? Well, I think what you're seeing is the uh, uh, the fact that a wide receiver is kind of at the mercy of the offense of whether the team runs or wins, whether he can win a Heisman. You see, you see that he cannot control the game from the wide receiver position. How about the two fumbles? Zach rolling left throwing right incomplete behind Tim Brown Billy Owens Gary Richard in the area 22 seconds left fourth and ten. Oh no what the point that I was making was yeah the two fumbles but the point I'm making is that the reason the Heisman goes to a quarterback or running back primarily is because they can control the game I think what you're seeing is Brown's team behind Notre Dame 27 another he cannot control the game if they double cover him he cannot be an impact player. Uh, you really take him out of the offense easily. It's a lot easier to hand the ball to a running back or drop back as a quarterback and throw it and have that kind of effect, that great effect on your team. That's why wide receivers don't win high school. Andrew Zach, one for six, 24 yards this quarter. Incomplete on fourth down. Andrew Zach is down at the 35 yard line, smacked by Burt Grossman. Holtz wonders why there's no penalty flag, and now there is a late flag. The backup quarterback is a sophomore, Tony Rice, out of Woodruff, South Carolina. It's a big play type of guy, Rice. This is a game where just everything has gone wrong for Notre Dame. I don't know that anything more could happen to this team. Motion, offense, decline. First down. Boy, if that's not an indicator of how this night has gone, their quarterback is down injured and they have a penalty on top of it. Terry Andrzak out of Allen Park, Michigan. Now he waited a long time to play. There was some question about his ability to throw long recognition of defenses. He had not been pushed into this game. He's being pushed now and the offense is not responding. A little wobbly. Now you're Pittsburgh. You've got the ball at the 45 yard line of Notre Dame. 19 seconds left. You have no timeouts. And nothing to lose. Nothing to lose by getting in field goal position. Janella, hot hand early. Safety valves it to Hayward. Down to the 33 in the grasp of Wes Pritchett. 10 seconds left and quickly the Panthers line up they'd like to throw the ball out of bounds and stop the clock chains will move the clock will start there goes Terry Andrews Janella throws it up into the tuba section looking in the direction of Reggie Williams and there are six seconds left on the clock and look at the difference in Janella this week and how up he is clapping his hands becoming a leader doing his job and what a lift for that offense Jeff Van Horn his career longest is 47 yards the sophomore he's only 5 9 there is what he's done so far in the season five out of 12 in the field goal department longest on the year 41 yards it will be hash mark to the left this is where the coaches say Jeff has had some problems even though he did kick the winning field goal against West Virginia from the left hash mark a 50 yard try out of the hold of Billy Osborne. He's missed two extra points wide to the left, and a 50 yarder is short and also wide to the left. Time has expired here in Pittsburgh. 56,500, the 49th renewal of Pitt and Notre Dame. The Irish came in unbeaten and untied, ranked number four in the country, and so far it's been all Pitt. They lead 27 nothing against the Irish. Let's go back to the studios. Scores and highlights with our game day host Tim Brando. 
All right, Jim and Kevin, thank you very much. Right from the Museum of the Hard to Believe. Uh, and the Burger King Halftime Report is here. Fast scores for fast times on the way on Upset Saturday here on ESPN. Bino Cook, Kerry Ross from Dallas, Texas. All of that and more on the way. Stay with us. First pit, 453 with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Where's 55 now with the Dolphins of Don Shula down in Miami? You played against Notre Dame twice. You guys were 0 and 2 against the Irish. What special memories do you have of this great rivalry? Well, I guess a lot of people can say the first memory is probably my first start ever as a freshman playing against them when they had the tight end Cam McAfee and we had uh, when Matt broke his wrist and we ended up losing. And uh, the second time was our sophomore year when we went up there. We had them, I guess, maybe about 21 to 7 going in the third quarter. And they ended up Joe Montana at that time walked back and, and got them into the game. I know you're a student of the game. Hugh Green won the Lombardi Trophy, won the Maxwell, the Walter Camp, of course, in 1980. And you were studying this first half. You said to me while we were away, how could a team play this badly against Temple and then come back and beat the fourth-ranked team as badly as you beat them in the first half? Well, I went and um, had, let's say so, in a lot of different things. You know, we went we came here. It was like a last-minute thing that we decided to come up here. And we came up and we started talking to a lot of the guys. And, uh, they knew that we were there. We were here, me and Ricky and a bunch of Chris Dolman, Bill Freilich, all of us came up, and we were behind them. And so I think that part of, of the inspiration part of us being around and saying something and, and patting them on the back and saying, come on, let's do it, that that might have been something uh, that we, uh, we might have to come here every week to do. Real quick, when's the strike going to be over? Right now, I don't think nobody knows. I think uh, the position that everybody's taking is a position where, you know, with myself as a player, I believe in the different things that we are striking for and you know, it's a situation where they, they tell you to come to work you go to work and, and if they uh, tell you stay away then you stay away but right now I think that everything uh, along everybody's side is very positive and they finally getting down and working out and getting things settled uh, the way they should have and hopefully next week uh, from some guys I hear that we'll be playing all right button up that park I go put on that mink jacket I didn't recognize you without that mink Hugh Green former All-American at Pitt as the Irish are on the short end, it's been all Pittsburgh in the first half. Red. The minus yardage will be in red, and any scoring drive, obviously none, would be in the yellow. First possession for the Irish, five plays and a punt. On their second possession, the interception that led to the second Pittsburgh touchdown. On the third possession, Tim Brown fumbled. On the fourth possession for Notre Dame, three plays and a punt. And three plays and a punt on the next possession. It was that kind of a first half for the Irish. No points for the unbeaten Notre Dame Irish. They came in with victories over Michigan, Michigan State, and Purdue. And they'll get the football back to start the second half. Jeff Van Horn missed a 50-yard field goal try to end the first half and missed one extra point try there is Tim Brown who has fumbled twice once on a punt once after catching a pass from Andrzak when he was breaking it for a 35 yard effort so here we go the second half is underway it's Pitt and Notre Dame Green will not give the ball up to Brown Green heads for the center and to the 34 yard line a 22 yard return for number 24 Mark Green as expected, the new quarterback is Tony Rice. He is a six-footer, 197 pounds, a sophomore out of Woodruff, South Carolina. No touchdowns, no interceptions. Sat out last year because of Prop 48. I did check on Andrzejewski. They said he was okay, so it is not an injury that brought Rice in the game. Rice, two out of three on the year. Won't get a chance to throw it in the grasp of who else? Number 26. Zeke Gadsden. A loss of 13. This may have been a blown play. I don't know whether they wanted to pitch this ball to the near side or not. The blocking is definitely run blocking. Rice blew the pitch. And Gadsden dragged him down. Coming into the game, Zeke Gadsden, well, he had four and a half sacks a week ago, 15 sacks on the season, 11 solo tackles last week. This is a man that did not have a job when camp opened up. Rice sprinting out. Will fire. Brown is open. Got it at midfield. Troy Washington has Brown. 
a 26 yard first down effort from Rice. Well the short man released Brown on that play. The deep man didn't get over and it was the strength of Rice's arm. Not a great pattern. He was just wandering around on the sideline and Rice drilled it into him. Pittsburgh cannot get lackadaisical against Notre Dame. Reggie Ward and Brown wide to the top of your screen. Smith on the sack of Tony Rice. The sophomore out of Toledo. Well, what you're going to see now is a lot more versatility from the Notre Dame offense. This is a kid who's got a strong arm. They just don't know where the ball's going. He can run. They don't know where he's going to run. It'll be exciting, though. Now, they'll take it right to the corner. Rice is going to pull it down. Pittsburgh defense is there. A lot like a wishbone, like an option. That was Smith that made the tackle. They'll take a loss, but they'll break a big one, too. Rice dives over the right side for a short pickup of two, brings up third and long. Word now from the Notre Dame bench on Terry Andrzak is that he has suffered a broken collarbone. That just before the end of the first half. So the fates and fortunes of the Irish in the hands of the sophomore number nine, Tony Rice, who coming into the game had only attempted three passes, completed two for 45 yards. Gone down earlier, checked with the Notre Dame people just a few minutes ago, and they told me he was fine. Brown and Ward wide to the left. Rice better unload. Pitt defense unloads on Rice. Zeke Gadsden led the way. We talked about him not having a job. He's a former running back. Finally found a home. Number 26. Zeke Gadsden. Out of Beaufort High School. Now Rice is young and one of the things you need to learn is to step up. He drops way back. See how Gadsden has an angle on him. He needed to step up help his blocker out. He didn't do it. He dropped too deep and stayed there. Gadsden got him. Balin is back deep. Terrell Austin will await the punt. It is high. Austin fields at the 22. No return. 12-14 left to go in the third after that 40-yard punt. Our halftime statistics overwhelming in time of possession and in total yards. And that time of possession, of course, is critical to the defense of Notre Dame. They were on the field that long, and it showed. They were pounded and physically overpowered the entire second half, it's, uh, first half and second quarter. And of course, the score reflects it. The score also reflects, Kevin, the confidence of that young man, Sal Janella, senior out of San Mateo, California. There goes Ironhead. Well, we showed you the Irish and their lack of scoring drive and possession. Again, the plus yardage in the gray, the minus in the red, the scoring drive. First possession, five plays and a punt. But on the second possession, seven plays and a 31-yard touchdown toss, Janella to Osborne Hayward from one on their next possession for another score and then Janella rambled around the right side and then Hayward for two and then a punt four straight touchdown drives and then a missed 50 yard field goal a gold rush there for the Pitt Panthers second and two Hayward cracks it across the 32 Gordon hanging on when you when you play in a game like this when you play in a game that's this lopsided somebody has to take charge when in the short end of this and ignite something the defense a little high there for Notre Dame these guys they got their pads way too high the offensive line doing a good job for Pittsburgh somebody is going to have to make a big play for Notre Dame to get the rest of these guys pumped up it's cold it's rainy you're getting murdered you just got to step forward and do something motion by Michael Stewart and forward motion by Iron Man. Iron Head, Craig Hayward, in the grasp of Ned Bolkar, the leading tackler for the Irish. About Hayward, how he got involved in football. It was his older brother, Nate, who was injured now, little Nate, a lot smaller than Craig, brought him to a Little League football practice. He just became the fourth all-time rusher. 26 carries, 78 yards. He passes Charles Gladman, you can see. Byron Thomas is straight ahead, then Elliot Walker. I don't think he'll get Tony Dorsett. Motion by Ella Bill Osborne. Oh. They 
can start him on the track team in the high hurdles. Craig Hayward went right over the top of Stan Smigala. I think the statistic that just defies imagination is the fact that he's 260 pounds and he can do this. I can't describe this. You just watch it. And he loves to practice. The coaches say he practices with the same intensity he plays the game. He hates it when practice is finally over. Loves to stay out on the football field. They'll add on 15 yards. It was a personal foul on Notre Dame after that play. I was telling you about how Nate. Dead ball. Personal foul. Defense. First down. I'll tell you about how Nate brought him to practice. Craig had never played, and he brought him to practice, and all of a sudden, Craig, who was so big, started running over every kid in the neighborhood, and he loved it. And he's been doing it ever since. And you're right. The thing about him is he just loves the game. He also loves pizza. Yeah. And he's hoagies. a legend here at Pitt. Yeah. He says hoagies, too. He likes hoagies on his pizza. Adam Walker, 29, checks in. Ironhead gets a rest. Riddick bangs across the left side, blocking up front by Dean Caliguire. The tackle by Cedric Figaro. It's a tough team to trail by 27 points. Running is their game. They've been strong at it all year. Of course, Hayward came in rushing five consecutive games over 100 yards, so they know how to run the ball. They're very strong up front. A tough team to have to get into making a mistake because they'll play it very conservatively now, and they won't throw anything uh, that can be easily picked off. His receiver. That's a close to first down. Henry Tooten. Tooten, a three year letterman in basketball at high school. Also recruited heavily by Georgetown to play basketball. All South Jersey out of Camden, New Jersey. There's Janella, young man that was definitely under the gun. We asked Mike Godfrey if this was a turning point in his season. He said, absolutely. This could be a turning point in the career of Sal Janela. Hayward checks back in on third and four. Motion by Osborne. About three yards shy of first down yardage as the senior out of Lafayette, Louisiana, Cedric Figaro made the stop. Now here's a tough call now for Mike Gottfried with that big lead. I don't know that a punt will do that much for you. He's on the 36 yard line. If he punts it in the end zone, he picks up 16. He's got the running game. Could really break Notre Dame's back and their confidence defensively if he picked up a first down here. They're going to go for it on fourth. And now, quickly, out comes the punt team trying to catch Notre Dame. that the Chinese bandits played at LSU. Chinese fire drill. John Rask will try to put it out of bounds inside the 10. And he sails this one nine yards deep in the end zone. 8-13 left to go in the third quarter. Notre Dame's ball at their own 20 when we come back. Hit 27, Notre Dame nothing. The CFA on ESPN is brought to you by... GMAC, the financial services people from General Motors. And by United Airlines, you're not just flying, you're flying the friendly skies. I'm Jim Kelly, Kevin Kiley alongside. And the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, ranked number four in the country, getting stuffed by the Pitt Panthers. Irish with the ball, Tony Rice, the sophomore quarterback, works with Brown and Ward. Wide outs, left and right. Rice looks for Ward, picked off and dropped by Gary Richard. He had an interception in the first half that led to the second Pitt Panther touchdown. Richard just sitting there and waiting for Rice to throw this ball. And Rice looks right over there. All he has to do is catch it. I mean, he did not take one step back on defense. He just waited. And he'll dream about that. When win or lose tonight, he'll be thinking about it. NFL scouts say that Richard might be the best cornerback in the country. Rice close to first down yardage. He'll get it if he crossed the 30. Bert Grossman bumped him out of bounds. That name familiar to Steeler fans. Bert, the cousin of former Steeler tight end Randy Grossman. 
I think Rice, injury or not to Andrzejczyk, I think Rice is the guy that needs to be in here. He's got a lot more mobility. When you're down by this many, I think it was 14 points, you could stick with Andrzejczyk, but this is a guy who's got big play capability. He could break one. He'll have to break four. Slithers forward for seven tough yards in the grasp of Zeke Ganson. Well, he's also, what this guy's doing is he's starting to put different things in the mind of the pit defense. Here's Gatson, who's been running loose all night. Now he has some responsibility. Here's a guy coming out there on the option. Zeke runs inside out and drags him down, but not before he gets eight yards. It's a whole new dimension now for the Notre Dame offense and for the pit defense to deal with. Straight ahead goes Anthony Johnson out of South Bend, a six-footer, 216 pounds, a sophomore, captain of his high school soccer team. Jerry Osofsky had him, the middle linebacker. Number 55 has been missing, hurt himself right after the BYU game. Just a little guy for a middle backer. And look at him take on the block at the head and shoulder in there to make the stop. He's a guy that's very important to this defense. Jerry Osofsky, just a junior, needs to put on about 35 pounds. He's going to turn pro, though. He's only about 210. Alonzo Jefferson, number three, checks in. Wide left. Rice stumbles, gets back to the line of scrimmage, falls forward and falls into Jerry Osofsky. Tony Rice, the sophomore, a four-year starter in high school, 7,000 career yards, 40 touchdown passes. Osofsky sitting at home in the middle, 55. Right there where he needs to be to make the tackle, as well as the rest of the Pete defense. And one thing about the option that they're running now, takes a lot of time. This is not a great offense when you're down 27 points. You can get a big play, but you better get it quick. Wide open. Rice finds Pat Terrell. Terrell finds the 31 yard line and Gary Richard and Quentin Jones find Terrell a 25 yard first down from Rice to Terrell an excellent play and Brown on the top side of the screen got double coverage the key to this thing the ball gets there in a hurry to Terrell right in the chest and he has a lot of time to react and get upfield after he catches it maybe a big difference in Rice and Andrzejczyk Andrzejczyk a little more experienced but Rice definitely a stronger on the ball gets there in a hurry Terrell was a quarterback in Lakewood High School in St. Pete, converted to a wide receiver. First and ten from the 31. On the dive, Ricky Waters, the freshman out of Harrisburg, PA. Are you surprised that the Irish not throwing on every down? No, I don't think they can, Jim. This is one of the better secondaries in the country. If they try to come out and throw on every down, even though they have big play potential, I think Pittsburgh will probably pick one off. Certainly, they'll defense. They need to keep Pittsburgh honest, and they're doing a good job of it here. One of the things that Lou Holtz has said to us in the two Notre Dame games that we have done, his passing game is not up to caliber to be a top team. Braxton Banks, number 39, cracks over the right side, blocking by Pearson and Spruell, and Carnell Smith, number 91, out of Toledo on the tackle. Watch number 90 went, 91, Carnell Smith. He was a backup, but he's an excellent player, not a true backup. Hole in his ground, kind of getting pushed over on his back, but he piled it up. The rest of the defense was able to get in there. 4 3, which is what their natural alignment is, is not a great defense against the option. Blitz. Rice got his man. That's Braxton Banks. Bumped out of bounds at the 15. Quentin Jones really stung him at the 15 yard line. It was Rice's feet on this play. What a great play. Tony Rice, watch Tony Rice's feet. He never leaves, he never stops looking at the receiver. Watch him step out of this. Hey, he just keeps his head up. He feels the defender at his feet and then drops it right in there. Good hands by Banks. What can Tim Brown do for you? Takes him deep. Underneath is where the pattern developed.
The Irish trying to claw their way back into it. Score with 4.33 left to go in the third quarter. A 16-yard scramble. Gary Richard, number six, who has an interception, had Tony Rice before he cracked it into the end zone. What Lou must be wondering now about his option, how well it's worked against this defense after they floundered that entire first half. Ted Brottle, 10 for 10 on the extra points this year, is 11 for 11. Middle linebacker in the option. He's got to get outside, but watch Tim Brown picking him off. Above the waist, you see, he's just not there. And that was number nine, Tony Rice, going for a touchdown. A lot of seams in this defense. Osowski is out of the picture. The rest of the defense overruns it. Rice, big and strong for a young guy, able to drag him into the end zone. A 20-point lead for Pitt, but this one is far from over. Irish getting back into it. Watch on the 16-yard scoring run by Rice, what Tim Brown, the All-American, and the Heisman hopeful does. Here he comes. With a little crack back block, there goes Osaski. Then Osaski gets hit in the helmet, and there goes Rice into the end zone. Lou Holtz has said for a couple of weeks that Timmy Brown is as fine a player as Lou Holtz has been around. Holtz feels honestly that Brown should have won the Heisman in '86. Not unbiased, of course, but of course he does say that Tim Brown contributes unselfishly. And here's an example because Brown is not having a great game. He might, in all honesty, be seeing the Heisman slip away tonight. He's had two fumbles. And he's not building up the great stats, and his team is behind by 20 points. Blocks don't win you the Heisman, but they'll sure make you a lot of friends on your team. Low kick, fielded at the eight by Billy Owens. Fights his way forward up to the 25-yard line. 19 minutes left to go. The Irish trail by 20. Play, and you can start to feel that momentum swinging. Well, Lou said the kicking game, defense, and discipline. And he has an opportunity here with his defense to make a big play. Over on the sideline, the former head coach at Pitt, who sent, actually set uh, Craig Hayward down when he played. It was two years ago that Foge was fired here at Pitt, and that year, right after he was fired, he was watching television with his 16-year-old son. In Notre Dame's last game, when they were coached by Jerry Faust, of course, they lost to Miami 58-7, to and his young son had tears in his eyes, turned to his dad, and he said, Dad, isn't there anything you can do to help Notre Dame? And here we are two years later, and Foge has made a tremendous contribution. Notre Dame fourth in the nation, 3-0 to this point, but trailing right now. Flag is down, and so is Craig Hayward. Ned Bolkar has it. Notre Dame's they just got to suck it up now. This is this is they've been dominated all night on that front line, and they have got to play better at the point of attack and stop Hayward. He's the first thing they need to stop because if they can stop the running game, they can stop the clock. They force Pitt into throwing incomplete passes. Going back to Foge, he helped recruit that man you're looking at on the screen right now, Craig Hayward. Look at that stat. Hayward 90 yards rushing and the entire Irish offense 39 yards. Foge went to Passaic, New Jersey and went to recruit brothers Nate and Craig. It was a package. Quite a package it was. Met with their mom, Mrs. Hayward. And the feeling on Nate was, well, yeah, he could play a little bit. Not bad. He could be on specialty teams. He would earn his keep. But Craig was the player that they wanted. Uh, Craig is certainly rewarded the Pitt fans with the faith that Foge and the rest in it. Motion by Billy Osborne. There goes Riddick, and Riddick will go close to first down yardage up near the 34-yard line. Corny Southall on the stop. Just good call. A lot of confidence in the offensive line for Pittsburgh. Gets number 72, just pushing and pushing and keeping and holding that block and not holding but holding the block, and that's important. Keep that man from getting off and getting to the play. That helped Riddick go for as many yards as he did. Now, Notre Dame, third and short. This is a turning point. Even though it's late in the third quarter, they have got to get the ball back and get the clock a little bit in their favor. Stop the clock. Ten carries, 53 yards for Riddick. Riddick and Walker in the backfield. Motion by Osborne on third and two. 
nothing doing. Adam Walker is stuffed by the Notre Dame defense. The defensive coordinator right there, just to pick up on the Hayward story for a second. When he was talking to Mrs. Hayward, he said, if you ever want to come to Pittsburgh, you can fly. That's in the days of People Express. Yeah. You can come to Pittsburgh and watch your sons play for 38 bucks. Round trip and a meal. What a deal. <laughs> and of course, the bottom line is he got both of them. And, and now, uh, of course, Mike Gottfried's delighted he did. Tim Brown would like to break one here about 60 yards. Snap is high. Rask pulls it down. It's blocked. Out of bounds inside the 20. The Irish on a roll. Blocked by Todd Light. Todd Light, number one, will come from the left side of your screen. His dad played football at Oregon State. This kid's a top player. He gets the opportunity because of the snap. He's 6'1". He doesn't have to use all of it. Takes a lot of guts to do that, especially in the cold. That ball hurts when it hits you. Lights all over it. Now Notre Dame is all over Pitt. The emotion of the Irish. They fell behind 27-0. 148 left in the third, the whole fourth quarter, so you've got almost 17 minutes of football and great field position now for Notre Dame. We'll take a timeout and find out when we come back if the fourth-ranked team will remain unbeaten or not. Football doesn't owe me a thing, but I owe my whole life to football. I'm very proud to be a part of the College Football Hall of Fame. The hall is located in Kings Island, Ohio, some 24 miles north of Cincinnati on Interstate 71. Enjoy looking at the Hall of Fame Honors Room, the Locker Room, the Gold Medal and Distinguished American Awards, and the Time Tunnel, tracing the history of the game. The College Football Hall of Fame. See it, enjoy it, remember it. I'm Jim Kelly, Kevin Kiley alongside. The Panthers ran off a 27-0 halftime lead. The only score in the third quarter, the Irish of Notre Dame. Todd Light with a block punt. Here we go, Notre Dame, first and 10 at the 19 of Pitt. Heck and Jacobs as the Irish line up with a double tight end. Rice in at quarterback for Terry Andrzejczyk, out with a broken shoulder play. And there goes Mark Green, number 24. Around the right side, blocking by Pearson, Spruell, and Heck. Quentin Jones, the cornerback on the stop, number seven defensively for the Panthers. They're running continually into that short side. Notre Dame just charged with a timeout. I don't know why. There was some confusion on the field just before we went away. So that's one timeout they will not have towards the end of the game if they need it. Notre Dame been running to that short side of the field and having great success to their right. Single coverage on Tim Brown again. Rice will look for him. He's covered, and Rice... Stutter steps down to the 11-yard line. Mark Spindler, the highly recruited freshman out of Scranton, Pennsylvania, and Billy Owens on the stop. What a job Rice has done, that extra dimension. The extra running back in the backfield, another responsibility for the defense, and they're not getting it done, Pittsburgh. Spindler, 6'5", 265, and he's 17 years old. Number 93 for Pitt, third and two. Rice inside the 10, Quentin Jones again. Very close to a first down, and it was the extra spin that did it by Rice. Just as he was hit, he turned inside and spun. Whether or not he's got the first down, they'll have to measure, but watch, this young kid, just a sophomore, 190 pounds, pretty big kid, watch this. Watch him, he's hit, he spins, and that's the difference between being close to a first down and maybe being a first down. Measurement is really meaningless because the Irish in a four down situation field goal doesn't mean much. The thing about having that much as you saw just a couple of inches is just, you have to get to the line of scrimmage in order to get that first down and what the defense can do it's really that six inches is not what you're trying to get to you're trying to get to the line of scrimmage. If Pitt can penetrate then they've got a chance to stop them. Chuck Lanza number 51 out of Germantown Tennessee the senior. Uh, center 6 2 270 has played the center spot since he's a freshman 
Let's see if Rice will just run over the center spot. Middle linebacker critical here. He's got to make a decision and get into the hole immediately and try and stuff it. All he needed was three inches. His initial surge gave him the first down. The spot will be crucial, of course. Osaski on the stop along with Spindler. Boy, I don't know if he did make that, Jim. Depends where they spot the ball. Well, his initial initial surge behind Lonza it's certainly looked as if he picked up the three inches. It's where, it's where the ball is. It's where the ball is, not where his body is. And I don't know. The Notre Dame people say they think they've got it. I haven't seen anything from Pitt. Well, you have good eyes, Jim. Right there. Right behind Lonza. He got it. <laughs> Never in doubt. Yeah. Notre Dame in the first half total yards 91 in the third quarter with Tony Rice at quarterback 93 yards they're knocking on the doors we'll start the fourth quarter Pitt leads by 20 but the Irish are coming back 56,500 here at Pittsburgh watching a great game the Panthers upsetting the fourth ranking and previously unbeaten Irish of Notre Dame first and goal from the nine Rice at quarterback, full house backfield. Mark Green down to the one and a half yard line, blocking, trap blocking on that right side by Jeff Pearson, 62, and Byron Spruell, number 73. Now watch the lead blocker from the backfield, number 81 was Tim Brown, kicked it out. That's Brown right there on the left of your screen. Green goes through the hole. Austin makes the tackle, but that was the Iceman candidate, wide receiver in the backfield, lead blocking for his tailback. The ball just outside the one. Touchdown, Notre Dame, Braxton Banks. This is a timing play again for the defense. Most teams will go over the top. Olsowski's got to make a decision right away and be in the right place. He's a little low. Braxton Banks with the bad knee has just come back and he gets way up in the air for a touchdown. Extra point try is perfect. Grottle 12 for 12 on the year. And the 25th head coach at this great university knows that his team is clawing and scratching back into this football game. They're down by 13, 14, 21 left to play. Seven, Notre Dame 14. Tonight's CFA football is being brought to you by Mazda, bringing performance and value together. That's the Mazda way. And by Casio, makers of the shock resistant, water resistant G Shock. Casio, it's one tough watch to beat. They're whooping it up over the Notre Dame band, and finally the Pitt Panthers over on the Pittsburgh sideline got their fans back into this game, Kevin. They started waving towels. It's been all the Irish here in the second half. Now Sal Janella we talked about early in the game Sal Janella is going to have to reestablish the offense three and out won't do it he's got to get some first downs on the right side of your screen was Billy Owens Reggie Williams was to the upper left hand side the kick is high but not very deep Billy Owens at the nine explodes to the 30 and beyond great return for Bill Owens at the 37 yard line. Storyline, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 34-yard return. The Panthers need some offense. 13 points off of two Irish turnovers. Craig Hayward becomes the fifth leading rusher of the history of Pitt University. Tony Rice comes in for the injured Terry Andrzejczyk. And Notre Dame, two possessions, two touchdowns to get back into this football game. Pitt has gone into a shell. they got to open it up offensively, do some different things. Janela's gone the whole way at quarterback. Ironhead across the 40-yard line up to the 42. Yeah, we keep calling Craig Hayward 
Ironhead. The origination of the nickname is a carefully guarded secret, but well, local lore has it that it, the uh, YMCA, where Craig usually would like to hang out in the afternoons, he was so hard-headed and stubborn, he was given the nickname of Ironhead. And who would argue? <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Ironhead. Second and five. Craig again. Cracks it over the left side, blocking by Caliguire and Bukowskis. Tom Gorman on the stop defensively for the Irish. So much emotion in this game. It's just, it's amazing how teams can just change their personality from one series to another. They're trying power football. They lined up tight end at a wing on this side. They tried to push him out. Notre Dame would not have any of it. And they're all over him. Now they've got a third and long. That shot of Foz, you said he was trying to treat this game like any other. Quick snap, Janela blitzes on, dances out of it. The Irish have got him. Wes Pritchett out of Atlanta, Georgia, 6'5, 235, the senior. There's a personality change for you. Foz doesn't like the blitz. Notre Dame is a conservative defensive team. They don't like to be forced out of their base defense, but here they come. Volcar and Pritchard and the rest of the defense. Janela not wanting to make a mistake does the right thing. He pulls the ball down, holds on to it, and takes the sack. No surprise. Guess who's back deep? Number 81. It's hanging high. Brown fields it and goes down at the 15, and a flag is down. Brown never had a chance to scamper with that one. A 45-yard kick and a minus three on the return. Let's listen to it. Clipping against the Irish. Notre Dame trails by 13 points, 12.22 left to go, and they'll be 95 yards away when we come. Show you a play that may get lost with all the great plays in this game. Watch 46, Craig Gobb get clipped by Streeter and still make the tackle on Heisman Trophy candidate Tim Brown. Now they're going to add yardage, go back to the 12-yard line. Gobb, a reserve, number 46, made the tackle and was clipped and leaves Notre Dame with 88 yards to go for a touchdown. A great play by a special teams kid. Green and Braxton Banks for the running back. Tony Rice at quarterback, Ben Zinn. From his own end zone, will look for Brown, streaking down the right side. Incomplete at the 40 of Pitt. Quentin Jones with him stride for stride. Pittsburgh felt like they could cover him, single coverage, and this is a this is a, a, a situation where you probably will get single coverage because they're so deep in their own territory. Look at Jones. Good position. Maybe gets a little bump. That's a pretty good cornerback play. Goes to Banks. Bangs his way across the 10, up near the 12. John Carter has him there. That clip and play by Gobb on the special teams was so important because it put Notre Dame in the shadow of their own goalpost, really inhibited, inhibited them offensively. And that long pass attempt made it second and 10. So now they're third and long. They need a big one here. Big. Five yards necessary for Notre Dame. Terrell wide to the top of your screen. Brown in the slot. Rice. Won't get it that way. Osaski, the middle linebacker, number 55. Well, they did something that very few teams do. They buried Ezekiel Gatson, but he still made the difference. Two men to take him out. They make Rice jump, and here comes the rest of the defense. Again, the lead blocking is there, but watch Rice have to go over Zeke's body. Osowski comes in and makes the play, but it's Gatson that slowed it down. Phelan will punt. Austin is back deep. This is a line drive. Austin on the dead run at the 41. Hammers his way to the 30, and the Panthers have good field position. Pittsburgh would not mind the field goal. The Irish got back to within 13. We've got less than 11 left. Panthers with that 13-point lead and great field position start this drive from the 30 of Notre Dame. 
Sal Janela stays in at quarterback. A young man gaining confidence with every snap. He played a great first quarter. The jury was out until Sal led Pittsburgh to two quick first touchdowns. Hayward barrels around the left side. Down to the 23. Bothar has him there. It was the hesitation step by Craig Hayward here to held the defense. That single back spreads the defense out so much. Watch him stop. Just hesitate right there. Held everybody inside, and he's able to get outside. And here he comes again. We've seen a lot of him tonight. 105 yards on 32 carries for Craig Hayward. Osborne in motion. First down for Pitt. They keep it on the ground. Full car on the stop of number 34, Craig Hayward. And there, Craig has become the first running back since Tony Dorsett to rush for six straight 100-yard games. Of course, Tony, when he played here at Pitt, was Tony Dorsett. Craig, by the way, has 4.7 speed. When they timed him at the spring practice, he weighed 272 pounds, and he still ran the 40-yard dash in 4.7. <laughs> when he gets rolling, you got to put on air brakes. Line of scrimmage, the 17 of Notre Dame. Craig inside the 15. Three Notre Dame players pulling him backwards. The first to arrive, number 47, out of Phillipsburg, New Jersey, Ned Volkar. I think it's important to point out here, it was an exchange here in the fourth quarter of special teams plays that gave Notre Dame the field position. The great play by the Pitt special team, stopping Brown on the punt and then the punt to Austin and having him run it back for field position. And it was a Notre Dame special teams we were concerned about that we thought would shine in this game and it's been hit all the way on the special team. Williams wide to the right. Hurd wide left. Down inside the 10, Pritchett hanging on. Helped out by Todd Light, who blocked the punt. You know, we've talked about Craig Hayward. We've talked about his size, his weight, his recruiting, his nickname of Ironhead. One of the things that you don't hear too often here in Pittsburgh, because he doesn't publicize it, all the work he does at children's hospitals. He goes around and visits with the children, spends a lot of time in the children's war. He's a tailback in a fullback's body, but he's got a big, big heart. Calaguire in the backfield. Hayward at the five. Brandy Wells rode him out of bounds. Got the crowd on their feet. And he's showing you a lot of heart out here, too. He's got to be tired. He's run the ball about 35 times. He weighs 260 pounds, but it was... It was Hayward around in that time. No small feat for a guy who's that big. You saw that two shot. Do you think Lou Holtz was asking Foge why in the world you recruited that big lumberjack? <laughs> That's kind of a unique situation, <laughs> isn't it? You got Foge who begged him to come here trying to stop him and not doing a great job of it. 36 carries, 125 yards. Well. It's not late night with David Letterman. It's late night with ESPN. Coming up next, the 49ers and the Tigers. Greg Papa and Dave Logan standing by to bring you that one right after this one. And Tim Brando back in our game day studio. He's been there since 1130 Eastern time. That's where we kick it off every Saturday here on ESPN. So we've got a triple header for you here on ESPN tonight. I can tell you what they're telling the defense right now. They've got the entire Notre Dame defense on the sideline. They're telling them, do you want a national title? Because that's what's on the line right here, folks. The national title. Notre Dame has no chance unless they beat Pitt and they stop them right here. First and goal from the five. There are bowl representatives from nine different bowl games here today watching this game between Pitt and Notre Dame. Well, I maintain that Pittsburgh coming into this game 
was the sounds like the best team with two losses in the country by far. This is a very fine football team, and this is no fluke that they're playing as well as they have been playing tonight. They've had a couple of things that had to go right for them, and they all went right in the first half tonight, and it showed you what kind of power this team has offensively.